All right, it's time to get this truck running. I'm tired of it sitting here not being able to move. I got a lot of stuff to cover, so I'm just going to jump right into it. Please ignore the wiring and don't try to copy it because a lot of it's been butchered. I would say it's best to always try to put everything as factory as possible. One more thing, don't ever drive your truck whenever you have like a big hole in the firewall. That is, you'll get too much smoke inside. I'm going to seal it up before I ever think about even sitting inside with it running. Like, I would say the very first thing to do, just check the oil that way you don't forget later. Uh, it's on the stick. It probably needs a quarter, so it's, the oil was clean enough. You know, that way you can see if there's any water in the oil. And that way later on when you start it, you don't, you know, you're not starting it empty. I would say the first thing to do, obviously, is to, you need to be able to crank the engine. Like turn it over, that's what that means, to spin it. I know it's dirty, but this is what's important. You have the wiring harness from the truck that's right here. This powers all your accessories to include the ignition that goes to your distributor, it powers your lights, everything. This right here is just the main cable that goes to the battery. See this one connects to the small terminal. Okay, so the most important part is this wire that connects to the little to the to the little terminal that says S on it if you're to clean it. That needs to have 12 volts whenever you turn the switch. Whenever you turn the switch all the way to start. This big one obviously needs to be hooked to a fresh battery that has a 12 volt. It should have 12 volts constantly, obviously. And so should these two because it's all connected right here. But you see that closer one? It has an S on it. That's for the switch. The one that has the R on it it's for if you have points, don't even worry about it. Big terminal, your wiring harness, and your main big cable go right there. Alright, I cleaned the battery terminals with this piece of sandpaper, hooked it up to a new battery. And everything was already hooked up. I'm going to go ahead and see if it cranks. Okay, it doesn't even crank. This doesn't fit good, you can't even tighten it. I'm going to check different things until I figure it out and then I'll just come back and say what it was. Okay, so I narrowed it down. It's literally this. Okay, so I got the new battery terminal. I got a pretty good solid connection. I'm going to disconnect the negative for now. So now the two other things you need is fuel and spark. Okay, so if I was the one that took this apart, this would be number one. But I'd still have to align the time and mark down there. I'm not the one that put this together, so I'm going to assume that this is not right. Let's take that off real quick. Alright, you see what I'm going to do right now? Is you can remove number one spark plug. There's a, probably a few ways to do this. Some people will stick a paper towel in the spark plug hole. And whenever you crank it, you watch which way the rotor is pointing. And whenever this is on the compression stroke, it'll blow, it'll blow out air. And that's whenever you know. You just kind of have to guesstimate of where it's pointing whenever you see it blow out. One problem I have is I'm by myself, so I'm going to actually film it and actually replay it to figure out where. Alright, so I went ahead and threw some manifolds on. They're not even bolted up to the exhaust, but I just want to quiet it down a little bit. And I don't have gaskets in there because they're 25 bucks, and I'm not really ready for them. Back to what we're doing. I watched the replay. And I'm going to say right there, the one that's in the center of the screen right now, that's the one that's number one. I have, I'd put in a video editor where I can look at it frame by frame, so but that's it. So of course, they give you a whole bunch of stupid links 
they give you some that are plenty long, but then they give you some really short ones that it gets kind of dumb. And that's the reason why you're supposed to make this one number one and have this pointed straight that way to make your wires fit better. And then that's also when that position is whenever the rotor's pointing at number one, and that's the other way people say to do it. So you can't argue with that. That's the truth. So I'm going to start out with number one. Remember, they, they number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Firing orders right there. Number one mistake. Already something stupid. I have these 90 degree boots, and that's going to try to. That's not going to work good with these manifolds. All right, the other side could probably use this wire better on number seven, which would be seven, seven would be right here. Rotates this way, so you do your, your thing that way. One, eight. Okay, we got two that do have straight boots. You use a straight boot, one, eight. See, the last one's too. I'm not going to cover this wiring very good. I have another video on it. Uh, plus, this video would be too long. I know that's not the proper way. The wires need to be tied where they can't touch the exhaust, but these wires are not really working good with this type of, type of manifold. I know I didn't go over that very well, but this isn't a video on how to wire it. That was roughly how you do it. So here goes the other important wire. Make sure you plug in the cap to the base and then this is the other hot wire that, that hook it up to the one that says bat. One says tack, one says bat, which is battery. Which I don't know why it says battery because it should say ignition switch or something. But this one needs to come on whenever the switch is in the on position, like the run position. All right, so I went ahead and put the radiator in it because it will squirt transmission fluid out of the lines if you don't have it hooked up. I filled it up with a. Uh, Almost half and half antifreeze. I had to I had to crank it a lot just to get it to pull fuel up in here. What you can do to tell that it's full is normally what you can do to tell that your carburetor uh, bowl is full is the accelerator pump will squirt gas. The truck actually runs. It's not really a big surprise because the, the truck was running when it was parked, so the distributor never moved. So as long as I got close enough to it, and I did pick the right one, it, it was already time perfect. That's why it idles. And anyway, check it out. Remember, the exhaust isn't hooked up, so it kind of sounds crappy, but whatever. I'll fix that later. I promise you that was a cold star. I'm telling you it's because it's a little carburetor. They, they actually run really good, the smaller the carb really. They're just not as fast. All right, so I kind of skipped something. And that's the compression test. Whenever you barely get an engine to turn over, at that point, it might be a, a good idea to go ahead and do a compression test. The reason I didn't do it on that one is because, like I said, I already knew that engine was running perfectly fine, except for it was a little bit worn out whenever I, I parked it. So I skipped that. But if you have no history on it, uh, you could probably skip it anyway and then go back to it whenever you can't figure out why it doesn't run. <laughs> But at that point, a compression test rules out everything mechanical on the engine. Like in other words, if you get good compression in all your cylinders and they're within so much percent of each other, like pretty much the same, 
that rules out anything mechanical in the valve train being broken or anything like that. I'm just saying I really like those those uh, Rochester 2GCs two barrels. I think they're one of the best running, smoothest running carburetors you could ever you could ever find like in the world. I know that video wasn't really that good because nothing was broken on the truck, so there was no troubleshooting. It was just me kind of talking about the different components it needs. But I should have known that because like you know I should have known that already. Oh yeah, one more thing. That that may not be the exact stock engine from an 82. I don't even know what it came out of. So th so that video so this video pretty much pertains to anything that has a carburetor and an HEI on it. Which a truck like that, if it was a factory 305, it probably would have an HEI obviously. An 82 probably has a carburetor like that maybe maybe not I don't I don't even really know if you found this video helpful or entertaining please like and subscribe the end